Uh, good every uh, good morning good everyone good morning everyone and we are looking at uh, some plant issues here let's take a look this is a uh, smoke bush that we uh, cut back a little bit this thing gets big I probably planted it too close to the house um, but as long as I keep it keep it trimmed back it should be should not take over too much, but these things can get really big. Now, fortunately, this is in the north side of the house. It's uh, located in a, uh, uh, you know, a part to full shade area, so it shouldn't get too big, but just do a little bit of pruning on it. Uh, these are knockout roses right here. Do not mind the Christmas lights. They are going to be out of here very soon. Uh, I probably should have pruned these back uh, a little while back, but We'll do them in the spring, it's no problem. We'll do them once the weather breaks, probably uh, mid-March or so, once we're out of the coldest weather. These are azaleas. This one's actually looking pretty good here. Um, and then we have another azalea. Unfortunately, this one's not doing too good. You can see that. I don't know if deer are coming through here or just people stepping through the beds um, something's going on with the azalea here. There's another one. There's another one that's not doing too bad. Try to get some holly tone on these. Just, um, you can buy it at your local nursery or garden center. Uh, just a bag of that and just sprinkle it around the azaleas and, uh, work it into the soil a little bit. Watch out because the azaleas do have short root systems. So I wouldn't really scratch it in too much. If you're going to do it, do it very lightly. Best thing to do is put the holly tone down. Um, put the holly tone down right before you lay your new mulch down in um, anywhere from early March to um, early to mid-April. You can do that. Uh, let's see. There's your, here's your, uh, boy, I just got a little bit of a brain freeze right there mop top this is again in uh, gets more sun in the summer but less in the winter and we are getting more sun now but this is totally in the shade pretty much uh, when we have less daylight in the cooler times of the year winter but they have grown quite a bit they've probably quadrupled in size since I put them in three years ago here's one of my favorite trees this is a crepe myrtle. This has the darker foliage, not the green leaf. This is more of a maroon leaf, uh, or a dark red. Uh, gets some nice uh, fuchsia colored flowers in the uh, summer. This one does take a while to flower because again, it doesn't get full, full sun and it's not as warm, but still is doing well. And it's, it's easily tripled in size for me. A little bit of fertilizer, a little bit of uh, soil amendments. Uh, you see this little band right here. This is not John Rambo. This is not John Rambo uh, with a trail of gunpowder when he blew up the City of Hope. This is actually deer repellent, uh, which I need more. Deer and rabbit repellent. Uh, there's your knockout rose. This is your liriope here. Look at the liriope, how it's been... See, that one hasn't been touched much. I think it's rabbits. Either rabbits or groundhogs. They're just feasting on this stuff. I've actually lost a couple here. Um, there's one right here. We have to trim some of these. That's sedum right there. And I don't know what that is. I don't, know, I don't think that's lemon balm, but it's um, another perennial. Here's my japonica, which I had one. I had a japonica. It was in, uh, you know, it was in a heavy shade to some sun in the morning. You can see a little bit of sun kicking it right now uh, coming in, but these do not like full sun at all. So maybe I had it in too much sun, but this one I've had in the ground now for oh, quite some time and it's doing well. There's new growth. Uh, dogwood tree here. You can see I have to do some pruning here. We have some low eye pokers. These eye pokers here, they need to be cut. See them hanging down there. Dogwoods, uh, this is too close to the house, really. If 
if I could move it, I'd move it out, you know, at least 10 feet, but do a little trimming on that. A little bit of fertilizer spikes in there, some soil amendments, some soil drenches. Here's your um, Japanese maple, which we moved in, it'll be 10 years in uh, June. We moved in here June of 2014 and some soil amendments and a little bit of fertilizing and just some sensible pruning. Um, and it's done well. This tree is much bigger than it was in 2014. Got to work around the mailbox here. I put summer annuals in here uh, closest to where I'm standing. Uh, of course, they're not here right now. It's much too cold. This is not Miami. This is Coreopsis that I have to cut back with the hedge trimmer. And I may actually just rip all this stuff out, even though I love the Coreopsis. Maybe I'll try to relocate it somewhere. But the rest of this is just crap, just viney crap. Uh, there is something here. I don't know if uh, Chrissy from Newcastle could uh, identify that, but it's just a, uh, a vine that kind of has uh, light green to reddish green um, foliage and it just kind of climbs up the mailbox. It's kind of a mess. Here's the lawn. Uh, you see that patch right there that was damaged when Comcast came by to put in uh, fiber optic lines and a little more damage there. I actually put some, I found some uh, Scott's uh, seed mix, kind of a peat moss fertilizer and uh, grass seed and I put it down just yesterday. We got a little bit of a mist last night. We're going to get some rain tomorrow. So I know it's cold and it's mid-January, but I figure why not we use the stuff up and maybe it will germinate before I put down my crabgrass pre-emergent, which I'll probably put down uh, in uh, late March to early April. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. 